This is a video about non-contact voltage diagnostics. This is a 120 volt defrost system circuit for refrigerator and I'm going to show you how you can not only determine the presence of AC voltage of 120 volts but also how to determine the likelihood that components are bad in a circuit that is 120 volts. Now this is a spin-off of a previous video that I did that included point-to-point -point voltage testing diagnostics, but this is with um, just uh, this is with a voltage pin instead of a voltmeter. So this is not something you want to try at home because this is actually set up with live wires underneath, and this is just a this is strictly meant to be a demonstration. So this is a refrigerator defrost system here. And this is a properly functioning defrost system. In a defrost system that is in defrost mode, you're going to have a defrost timer where the contacts are closed. Uh, defrost mode uh, so that the defrost element is energized. So the contacts of this defrost timer will be closed uh, as to energize the defrost element circuit. Now, if the freezer, if the, de if the defrost bimetal is below say 20 degrees or whatever it's rated for then this will be a closed circuit so what you should have is you should have L1 going through the defrost timer contacts through the defrost bimetal and to the top of the load now this load has resistance suppose this is say 30 ohms whatever it is it is the load and the load should have the voltage across it in fact the highest resistance in a circuit has the most voltage across it and you have two switches here essentially that are closed circuits. So they have zero ohms across them which means that this is going to be the highest resistance in the circuit and it's going to have the, the full 120 volts across it. So we'll be able to tell that using the voltage pin by checking these respective points right here. So in this case if this defrost system is activated we should have 120 volts here because L1 is going to be passed through these two essentially what are switches right here and you should have 120 volts here and 0 volts here so we should light up the voltage pin here but not over here so let's give that a try so there's our L1 over here there's our L1 it's being passed through the defrost timer it's being passed through the defrost bimetal because this is of temperature and it's sitting on top of the load here. But we have zero volts here. So what that tells us is that we have 120 volts across this. And we can go further, go a step further. We can, uh, di we can diagnose these components here to some extent. We can say, well, if the defrost element is not getting hot, or if you have a clamp meter on here, you're not measuring any current, then that means that this defrost element is bad because you have 120 volts across it. Now let's go ahead and, and let's go ahead and look at this scenario where the defrost bimetal was not closing. If the defrost bimetal was not closing, then that L1 is not going to make it to this defrost element. Okay, so now we have so let's go ahead and open up this bimetal here. Alright, so now we have an open bimetal. It's not closing like it should, and it's it's bad. So what should happen now is we should, this, this voltage should not make it past this point right here. So it doesn't make it over here because this bimetal is open. And this has 120 volts across it. Now this return pass right here would pass through this element here because this has resistance. And the highest resistance wins. So there's not much higher resistance. There's no higher resistance than infinity. So we have infinity ohms right here. So this resistance wins. This is what has 100, 120 volts across it. Right there. No, yeah. So we, this can actually tell us we have a bad bimetal because we know it's down to temperature. And we can do that without breaking into the system and checking the, the resistance of that bimetal. Let's go ahead and close that bimetal again. And let's open up the defrost timer. So now in this case, the defrost timer is not closed and it's not going to allow 120 volts to make it even to the bimetal. So in this case, 
You've got our L1 right there. And but it's not making it through the it's not making it through the defrost timer. So those contacts are not they are not closed. So it's either in in cooling mode or if it's in defrost mode then the the timer contacts are bad. Now this can't really tell us whether the bimetal is bad because we don't have any voltage over here to be able to determine that. However, once we restore the voltage here by either replacing the timer or advancing the advancing the timer, then we would be able to go back and check that bimetal there. So this is telling us that we have an open defrost timer. Now this time we're looking at a gas dryer with no heat. So this is a normal operating state here. Your relay or your timer that activates the heat circuit is closed. Your stats and your thermal fuse are all good and they're closed. And this is your gas circuit which is going to consist of your igniter and your coils and whatnot. And this is going to have resistance initially because of the igniter and the coils are also going to present, well it's actually impedance but for our purposes here let's just call it resistance. It doesn't really, it's not really relevant to this discussion here. So what we should have is 120 volts right here, and this centrifugal switch should close and pass neutral to this point right here. So we should be getting, right now, should be getting 120 volts from here to here, and so we should be getting a reading all the way across here into there. We should be getting no reading there. So this tells us that our gas circuit is getting voltage. And if the gas circuit is not still working, then we know there's something actually wrong with the gas circuit itself. Now what if the relay or timer was open? Let's go ahead and open that up here. And so if, if that was open, well, really the L1 isn't going to make it any further than this right here. So it's not going to make it any further. So that's that's that right there. The relay is open. And if the relay is supposed to be closed right now, or the timer contact is supposed to be closed, and this, it's in heat mode right now, and this is what you're getting, then you know you need to be looking at that relay or that timer right there. Now, past the relay, you've got a series of thermostats, high limit, you've got your thermal fuse, um, your thermal cutoff. So let's just say they're all right in here. And um, I'm not gonna separate them out because this, this jig here only has so many parts of this uh, circuit that we can open up. So let's go ahead and close this here. And get our pin to cooperate, we're gonna close that. Alright, that's a closed circuit. Then we're going to open this up right here. Okay, so that's open. This is closed right there. And we're going to test, get our voltage pin out. So as expected, we got that there. And then the dryer is turned on and it's in heat mode. And now we know that we have 120 volts here. We know the relay is working because it's passing that through go over to here. But if we go over here, we have no voltage. So that means we got 120 volts across this right there. And this is the highest resistance in the circuit again. So that wins, that gets all the voltage across it. So now you got an open thermal fuse or some or a high limit or a thermal cutoff or something like that. And it's open right there. Now let's look at this scenario where the load is actually bad in the gas circuit. So we'll go ahead and we're going to close this circuit there, close that switch, and say we've got a break in the circuit here. I'm just going to show it as being a break in the resistor. So something's going on your, with your gas circuit, your, maybe your igniter is open, or your flame sensor is open. So let's go ahead and read that. So we got that, we got our 120 volts there, got it there, that's where it should go. Got it there, but we don't have it here. So this means that either the centrifugal switch is open or the the gas, there's something wrong with the gas or because the gas is, is not igniting right now. Or say the igniter is not glowing. So we know something's going on with the gas circuit right there. We don't really know the centrifugal switch, but centrifugal switches don't go bad that often. So we can probably surmise from this that um, there's something wrong with the gas circuit in this case. All right, let's go ahead and fix that load right there. We're fixing so let's go ahead and open this centrifugal switch. I think you guys are getting the idea by now what we're doing here. So let's so open up the centrifugal switch and go ahead and test this. 
So the dryer is running right now, but the gas circuit's not working. So we'll go through here. Now by this, we can tell that that 120 volts is making it through. We have 120 volts across the centrifugal switch. And it's not possible to have 120 volts across a centrifugal switch that is closed because that would be zero ohms. So this has become the highest resistance in the circuit. And this is infinity, which means it's open. So if that motor's running, that needs to be closed. So we've got a bad centrifugal switch right there. So those are some different scenarios in which you can use a voltage pen to do point-to-point -point voltage testing and not only determine whether you have voltage or 120 volts at a certain point, but also to give you some ideas to, as to whether some components are actually open or not. In the description of this video, I put a link to a recommended voltage pen that I've used and have, I've found to be very reliable. So I hope this video has been helpful and informative.